Hey, what's good, everybody? Welcome to the Hangout with the one and only Defy Life with P4CM tonight. Yo, it's going to be one of the dopest conversations we've had in a while. Uh, but before we get started, I want to open this thing up in a word of prayer, and then we'll jump right in. Um, yeah. Let's talk to the Father real quick. Uh, Lord God, we just thank you uh, for this opportunity to come together, to fellowship, Lord God, and to honor you. Uh, we just thank you, Lord, and we pray that everyone that is listening, that is watching tonight, God, is edified and blessed and entertained. You all the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Amen. Me, before we jump into Amen. To my man, um, Defia, um, let me introduce the panel real quick. Uh, we all okay. have we have on the uh, on the panel my man TQ, who is one of the executive directors of P4 CM. That's the dark skinned brother right there with the little mini afro. What up? What up? What up? Okay. And uh, we also have executive director What's Chris, good? Davis. Chris Davis is on over there. I guess he will probably be on your right if you're watching the panel right now. I'm the lightest brother on the panel. That's how you know who I am. There you go. And, of course, none other than the one and only Defire Life, a.k.a. Fire, a.k.a. It's going to be all right, though. Team Darkskin. <laughs> a.k.a. Lifey, a.k.a. Uh, J.L. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's also in the building. All right, my man, first thing we're going to do. Yes, sir. First thing we're going to do. All, all the above. <laughs> Uh, if you guys haven't recognized, there's a slight delay on the hangout, so um, okay, keep uh. Jafar is out in Afghanistan, so we have to wait for the delay, like on the news reports. Right. <laughs> you got an Afghan on the East Coast. That's what they call it up in New York. Right, like I'm, at, I'm like I'm on the coast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> like I'm overseas on a tour of duty. Right, <laughs> straight Beirut. All right. Um, First question. We're gonna do this thing. Basically, we're gonna do this thing called rapid fire, Jafar. All right. So we're gonna hit you off with a bunch of questions. First answer that comes to your head, go hard. All right. What's the top five MCs of all time? Top five MC MCs of all time. Um, rapid fire. All right. Let's go. Um, ah, uh, ah, uh, Biggie. Nas, Jay Z, Eminem, Ooh, and Scarface. Scarface, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, face yeah. You see your Marvel. Yeah, that y'all got y'all got to listen to that, Mister Scarface. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Okay, so all right, DC or Marvel? DC or Marvel? I'm, yeah, uh, Marvel all day. <laughs> Marvel all day. <laughs> yeah, I know people gonna be mad, right. but oh, oh, oh well. Um, Chris, you got it. Yeah, who wins in a rap battle between you and your man Rob Hodge? Me, <laughs> me. <laughs> no, no light skin person can beat me in the battle. That's how you feel, man. That's that's like light skin versus team dark skin. That's how I feel. That's how I feel, man. You want me to pick up the mic, man, just to put that down, homie? We be here. People name hey, on the hey, album. Hey, do it. We've been hearing all these people name on the albums. Who are Nessie, Foxy, and Flashette? Who are these people? You keep calling them all out. Who are these people? Okay, say it again. Who are Nessie, Foxy, and Flashette? Oh. Oh. Okay, okay. Um, Nessie. Ne Flashette, yeah. She is my cousin, Vanessa. She's my older cousin. Um, she pa She passed away a few years ago. She was very dear to my heart. She was um she was super fly. She she loved me. Um, you know, she she always used to tell me when I was little that I was always sharp as a fish hook. She used to always be like, yo, you sharp as a fish hook today. 
And I always remember her saying that. So that's Nessie. Um, Foxy is Foxy. Foxy is Foxy Brown. Um, the rapper Foxy Brown. And um, Plachette, Plachette is my homegirl from New York that I used to date. That she's one of the. She's actually the first person that kind of really helped break me in New York City in terms of the Christian hip hop community. And she's and she's best friends with Foxy. Okay, what up? Now it makes sense. And she's best. Yep. Yeah. All right. Um. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, oh, we going. Oh, in and out. <laughs> Yo. In and, in and out. So the yeah. question was, <laughs> I don't think everybody got the question, but the question was five guys or in and out, and my man said in and out. Now look, I'm Cali native, born and raised, but look, man, I just switched it. I just switched it. It's all five guys now, yo. I know. In and out with the quickness. I mean, crucify me, I know, but it's all it's all five guys right now. Listen, all right, next question. Man, uh, look, in and out Burger is like one of the best burgers I've ever tasted in my entire life. Next question. Is I mean, how many push can I do? Uh, yeah. I mean, I usually do sets. Of, I usually do sets of like twenty-five or thirty at a time. So, in one sitting, um, I don't know. I probably if I haven't worked out in a few days, I probably can get in about maybe about a, a hundred and fifty at the most. If I'm mad, I get in like two hundred. <laughs> you not? Yeah, that's not a little braggadocious or nothing, is it? Now, I, I'm thinking that that's light compared to some of y'all, probably. <laughs> so yeah, AD just you just think push-ups. That brother's so thick. <laughs> oh, no. oh man, I, on. I believe it. <laughs> hey, get a last question, uh, Chris. Go ahead, man. Yeah. All right. Would you rather be known as the world's greatest MC or the world's richest MC? I, I know your answer already, but go ahead, let the world know your answer. Oh yeah, you 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 already know my answer, bro. You you know the world's richest MC. <laughs> <laughs> oh come on, that wasn't your answer, man. Because look, because man, because if I got money, you're gonna respect me, right? What's the name of probably? Agree with me. What's the other one? What's the dark skin do? TQ. Ask him <laughs> yeah, hey. You know, a light skin dude would understand. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't have money, and I don't have no money. I think you know it's a lot more comfortable, man. When you dark skin about dudes about understand me because we've, you know, what I'm saying. Listen. Hey, the struggle don't the struggle don't discriminate. Dark skin dudes will understand and agree with me because our life we've had to fight. Uh, the struggle don't discriminate, man. All our life, we've had to fight for our rights. <laughs> listen, listen, man. Dark-skinned people are still in slavery. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yo. Nah, nah. You, um, go ahead. No, no. But really, my real, my real answer is the world's the world's greatest MC. I'd be rather rather be known as the world's greatest MC over the world's. Richest MC because I take respect, you know what I'm saying? Like I've I've been given a lot of respect thus far and I'm and I'm content with that, you know. So I think um my heart kind of speaks that. So like yeah, definitely Chris Chris knows how I feel. He knows he knows the real answer. Yeah, word up. All right, yo, um we are on right now with Fire Life, um, one of hip hop's uh best kept he's not so much of a secret, but he's one of the uh, one of the best MCs in the game right now. We're repping. I'm still a secret. <laughs> nah, <man. laughs> hey, yo, I got I'm this. Still a, it's all good, though. No, no, no. This, I'm about to turn up, though. This right here ain't a secret, brother. This ain't no secret right here. This one knocks. For real, though. For real, though. Um, but we're repping with your fire life right now. What's, what's... P4CM. And we just want to let you guys know about rhetoric is coming up. On August 2nd at Cottonwood Church, uh, rhetoric mm -hmm. going down. Tickets are available online um, right now. 
You can go to P4 or rhetoric.p4cm.com to pick your tickets up. And I don't know if you go right now, they they still could still could be at a very very discounted rate. So if you want to get that discount ticket, I'll run to p rhetoric.p4cm.com right now for the show. That's right, y'all better eat it up for them ticket prices go back up. I know that. They're they're extremely low right now. So if you want it, yeah. you need to go and get yours. All right. So let's get back in with my man Jafia. Yeah. Um TQ. Jafia, brother. Um I know the people out there want to know what they know behind this. This can you tell us how you came to the Lord? Uh what's your testimony? Tell us a little are, bit about that. Are you that. still typing the questions or okay? Okay, cool, cool. Um, yeah, um, basically, I'm trying to figure out where I should start. Um, I I I start here. Um, I was I was a kid in the neighborhood rapping with my crew, um, and living how I wanted to live, rapping how I wanted to rap, um, and one of my best friends. That was in my crew too. He's a he was a Christian then too. Um, see my see my story is kind of more of a, a coming back to the fold as opposed to a conversion story, because I actually I actually accepted Christ when I was very young. Um, my parents led me to the Lord when I was young, and um, but but I went out into the world and did my own thing through my teenage years, and um, when I hit nineteen, is when I guess I guess for lack of a better way to phrase it, I I, I received my official conversion, for lack of a better way to put it. Um, and how that kind of happened was, um, like my friend, he was in the crew with me, and um, you know he pulled me to the side one day. We were on the block. He pulled me to the side and he was like, um, "Yo, man, I'm 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 about to leave." And I was like, um, "All right, cool. What time are you gonna be back?" <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, but he was like, no, nah, I'm 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 like I'm leaving Philly. So when he said that, it kinda like caught me off guard. And um he said, Yeah, I'm going down south to live with you know with my with my uncle and my family and my parents. They all coming down to North Carolina. He said, I just want to see what God got for me. He said, I'm tired of this lifestyle. He was like, Man, he said, he said, he said, You should do the same thing. And when he said it to me, it was it penetrated me because he was like my right hand man. It was like it was like twelve of us. It was about eight to twelve of us, and in that eight to twelve, it was little pockets of us. It was like two is real close, three is real close, these three is real close. But we will all come together as a collective. Um, and it was three of us that were real close. It was me, Dave, and Jermaine. And Dave, Dave is the one that pulled me to the side. <clears throat> and ironically enough, Dave is b first blood cousins with Ambassador's wife. Nice. So, so, so Ambassador's wife kind of saw my she they, his family their family Ambassador's wife's family is kind of like my second family. Um. So, so when he told me that he was leaving, it really impacted me because he was so close to me. We did a lot of stuff together we did everything almost together and um i knew that he was serious i knew he was serious um and i knew that more than anything not only did i know he was serious i knew that my my time was coming <clears throat> like i knew the same thing that the same revelation that came to him that it was time for him to give his life over to god and do and do what God wanted him to do and still doing what he wanted to do with his life i knew that day was coming for me too it was kind of like it, it kind of shook the ground beneath me, um, and when he actually leave, that's when that's when it hit home. Because the other dude that was closer to me, Jermaine, he went further out into the street. So, so it kind of impacted me. Where I said, "Man, like this is his life now. Like he's not even in Philly anymore. This is his life now." I said, "So if he can go from living how we were living to living a whole completely different life." I said, there's no excuse that I can't do the same thing. And um, right after that, it was a series of events. That was the first domino. Right after that, my mother invited me to a convention. 
at, at, at her church where they were kind of like, it was like a, a people come, coming together, learning songs, and um, young people my age, older people, and um, she kind of asked me, like, yo, you should come to the convention and be a part of it. And first I was kind of like, nah, man, I'm good. I said, when is it? She said, it's Thursday, Thursday night, Friday night, and then all day Saturday, and then they said Saturday night. So Thursday night, night, and Saturday all day, they would, we would be learning songs. And Saturday night would be the concert. I said, I said to him, I said that ain't gonna work. I said that ain't gonna. That's the weekend. Like I said, I'm not. I said I can't. I can't go to that. I was like, no. Nah. I was like, I said I tell you. I said I tell you like like Wednesday or whatever. So by the time Wednesday got here, God had done something inside of me that that just like it made me. It, it just broke me down to the. He had broken me down so much that by the time Thursday came. I called and told them, I'm, I'm in. Let's do it. And and then what happened was all of the songs that we would learn, see, like when I was going, it was so many people at that church that remember me from when I was younger, and they were so happy to see me, and they were telling me that they were praying for me, and my mother was telling them about the stuff that I was involved in and that they were praying for me. And um, I was like, man, like God is really surrounding me with love. Like and, and really surrounding me like with his peace. like I didn't have peace like that for a long time, you know. So um, and I knew my my mother my mother was very strategic about that. She's a very smart and wise woman, um, and, and so so all up into Saturday learning the songs. I'm impacted by these songs that we learning. And mind you, these ain't no rap songs. Obviously, these are songs you like. I gotta sing. Saturday night with this like mass choir of people, so because I sing too. So oh. Saturday night comes, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, I I do my little Bobby Brown. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Look, we break this in the story. You give us like like a couple of notes. Okay, okay. For one of them old Negro spiritual types, we want to just throw people all the way off. Oh, listen, bro, <laughs> listen, bro. I can do a I do a great Bobby Brown rendition at the drop. -off. All right, what up? What's up with it? Yeah. But back to the testimony. Yeah, back to the testimony. So, uh, <laughs> so, so, okay. <laughs> but, but, but anyway, so anyway, to 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 attempt to make a long story short, um, you know, my mother invited me to this convention. At the at the end of the convention, which was a Saturday night, my mother and my father were both there. Um, they're both still together. They were married before I was born. They're still married now. Um, both of them there. I sat next to my father at the at the convention, and at the end, after everybody sung and the concert was over, they gave a call of salvation, and my father kind of tapped me on my arm, and I looked at my dad like like what's up, and he was like, you want to go up there, and I was like, go up there for what? I was like, I'm already saved. And he was like, no, to rededicate your life to Christ. Mm -hmm. it, it like clicked for me. And it just made sense to me. It just made sense. Like, all right, I he, everything he said was right. I, I'm already saved. He said to he didn't say to get saved, he said to rededicate my life to Christ. And that made so much perfect sense to me. And God just gave me the courage to just I got up and I went up there. And it was it was it, it was real because I'm the, out of a out of a church full of people. I was the only person that went up there. Mm -hmm. I was the only person that went up there, and I think for me that spoke volumes because it was it was like I could feel God telling me, like, I, I, I I'm I'm letting you stand up here by yourself, embarrassed, all eyes on you, on purpose, because I'm putting you on display to to your enemy. To, to Satan. I'm literally, I feel like he was literally putting my life on display to Satan to say, I got him now. Like, I got him now. Like, I finally got him. I got him. You know, so um, from then on out, man, it was kind of like a, a continued domino effect. Like, people, like, God just kept placing people in my life. Like, another dude that I went to high school with named Brooklyn, he was from Brooklyn. He came to my high school in 10th grade. Um, me and him reconnected, 
and we weren't we weren't we weren't on the best terms in high school, but we always had a mutual respect for each other. And I ran into him and took I ran into him at the mall, and he was like, "Yo, what's up?" I said, "Yo, what's up?" He said, "Man, what you been up to?" I said, "Man, I just been you know just doing my thing. I've been I said I've been kind of changing a lot. I ain't really been doing a lot of stuff I've been doing." He said, "Me neither." He said, "I got saved." I said, "I'm done." <laughs> I said I'm done. I said I'm done. He said I said me too. And then from then on, it just was like we were like inseparable for like, for like. I mean, he's still like one of my best friends. And this was like in like this was like in like '97. Yeah, this was like '97. So um, he's he's um he's he's played a strategic role in my life just in terms of consistency and seeing where he came from and seeing what I came from and seeing his dedication to the Lord. Has just been um, a tremendous, a tremendous value to me and encouragement to me. Um, and even my friend that left Philly, he's still he's still walking with the Lord too. So like just God putting people in my life. Man, it just like just just dudes in my life. I came from um, living for themselves, you know, not concerned with um, what I wants to do with our life, and seeing these dudes consistently live this thing out has been dope for me. I mean, there's been setbacks and there's been stumbles and there's been falls, but I mean, the dudes around me have been consistent for the most part. Uh, so that's that's my story, man. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good look. Um, that's a dope testimony. Yeah. God for that, man. Yeah. Hey, uh, Chris. Yeah. Got the real. next one up? Yeah. What is the origin of your name? What does it mean? Defy life. Right, right, right. Um, well, yeah, Jafia, I got that from a book of biblical names that my grandmother had. And um, when I saw the meaning of it, I went straight to the J's um, because my birth, for, for, for those who don't know, my birth name, James, that's my birth name. Right. Okay. So I autom yeah, I, I I automatically went to the J's and um you know, I was just reading the meanings of the names and um Jafia Jafia meant sunshine, um, or to or to like to shine a light. And for me, I always felt that that was, you know, kinda like what I wanted to do. Um, is just like really like sh shine a light where in, in a dark place with my music. Um so and I like the name. And I said, you know, maybe it'd be a cool name for like, you know, when I get married and have a kid, I have a son, maybe I can name him Jafia. Um, and then a lot of people used to call me Life a lot because they should say I just, I rapped about my life um, so much or talked about my life so much in my music. And um, one day I was at the studio with Jude Gavin, one of my producers that um, produced my first project, Pages of Life. And um, I was in the studio with him and one of my guy sisters, Ranisha Howerton, she's a singer. And she, um, I, was, I said, man, I don't, I gotta come up with a name. I want like a first and a last name. And um, and uh, she said, they said, why don't you just? She said, what about that name you told me about your fire? And then he said, what about life? And I said, I don't know about neither one of them. And then he said, well, why, and Jude said, well, why don't you just put your fire and life together? And I was like, I don't know, I don't, I don't know about that. That's kind of whack. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of whack. And then Ranisha said, I like that. And I said, well, that's it. <laughs> I said, if girl, I said, if girls like it, then women, I said, I said, women, I said, women buy records. I, I said, I said, women, I said, women buy records. This dude. <laughs> so, I mean, it's a little brain. I said, you know, she said, I think that I ain't. She said, and you know, she said, and you know, she said, and you, she said, and you know, we buy records. And I said, you know what? You, you, and I said, that's my rap name. <laughs> my man named himself for the ladies. That's what yeah, it is. <laughs> Capitalize the marketplace. Get a name the ladies like. I feel it. Word, uh, hey, somebody crashed the, the hangout right now. Anyway, um, yeah. yo, um, uh, I got a question for you, brother. I noticed something a couple of days ago when I pulled okay. out when I pulled out the album that I just threw up a minute ago, the Fountain of Life album. Mm -hmm. 
that you got a, you got a little poetry chops in you, man. You started off the intro, right, right, with some poetry, man. And um, I was curious if you right, ever, right, ever like really pursued pursued poetry as you know a profession at any time. You know, it's so funny because I. I knew y'all was gonna ask me this because of y'all y'all so connected with rhetoric. I was like, y'all already know they're gonna ask me a question yeah. about poetry. Yeah. Uh, but but nah, but to answer your question though, yeah, nah, but to answer you know, like I've I've always written poetry, like when I was younger. I, I, I got away from it when I started rapping, um, and just making music. That became my poetry. Um, but but I mean I've never I've never contemplated doing po getting more into poetry from the standpoint of like actually getting in front of people and doing it but I would love to like I would love to I mean I got I got some I got some stuff that I definitely could I think I have verses even if I broke them down in poetry or spoken word, word form yeah. they would go over well yeah so, so I think I I definitely would see it could be that's that's part of the question really because when I was listening to the um uh, the Final Life album intro, it wasn't like a 16 that you just said, I'm going to make this a poem. It was like a straight mm -hmm. up poem. And I was like, okay, this dude actually got some poetic skill. So yeah, the yeah. next question that follows that, that I'm just going to tag on, is what's up with Rhetoric 2014? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> hey. Hey, I'm, I'm game. I'm game. I mean, you know, like, I got one of my favorite DVDs At my at my place is uh, to watch is um, deaf deaf poetry jam yeah. first season yeah um, and I just remember like rappers come I just remember rappers coming out and like doing like their verse doing a like a verse but they would just like do it in a way without a beat where it was like a poem and right. I always love to see the rappers come out and do like say one of their verses mm -hmm. at deaf poetry jam so that always has been something that I wanted to do. So I would, I would love to, I would love to come out the rhetoric and, and do something. I would love, I would love it. All right, sounds good to me. But we gotta, you know, I, I don't, I don't got the call on set that. It one, <laughs> so yeah, set it up. Yeah, set it up. Yeah, yeah. All right, this next question: What is yeah. your take on artists known for doing gospel hip hop? Being featured on a non-Christian album and vice versa. Uh, yeah. Um, and vice That's versa. right. Go ahead, be honest. Um, okay, well, be honest. I, I, I know I'm going to answer. Go ahead, be honest. Oh yeah. Oh, oh man. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> I love this question. Like I, I, I feel, I, I feel like. I feel like it's. I feel like it's needed. I think. I think th this is something that needs to happen. I think that it's about to start happening more. Um, but in terms of, do I think it's right or wrong? I don't think that it's wrong at all. I think that um, actually, I think that it's 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 been it's beneficial, just because um, for for you to be a Christian and for somebody that's maybe not a Christian to invite you on their song and if they know especially if they know that you're a Christian based on being a fan of them hearing your music I think that that's an awesome deal because you get to you kind of get to shed light on your your take of whatever the subject is of that song so somebody may say well what what fellowship does light have with darkness but I think that when you really get down to the nitty-gritty that I don't know if that would apply here for the simple fact that if a secular artist is inviting a Christian artist on their album, I don't think that they would be inviting them on a song about like athe like to like about being atheist or about like you know against some something that's against what we believe. So um, it's like if a hip hop artist invites me on their album and I, and the song and the song is about you know, like the state of violence or the misogyny in hip hop. I don't see a problem with a Christian 
getting on that song because it's kind of like it makes me think about you know what it makes me think about I, I go okay so if a person feels like if a person feels that's wrong and that person that thinks that's wrong is a part of hip hop culture and they're a Christian it's, it's odd to me because what happens when they do self-destruction part two so I can't be involved I can't be on that. I can't when they when they're ready to do self destruction part two and all of the notable new artists like whoever you name in hip hop right now that they get to be on self destruction part two and they ask me to be on self destruction part two. You mean to tell me because I'm a Christian I can't be on that song? That doesn't make sense to me. Like honestly, that kind of that's kind of counter. The idea of that being wrong is almost, well, not even almost, it is counter to the Great Commission. Mm. When you look at the Great Commission, like the essence of the Great Commission is go into the, the darkness and be a light. Be in, but not of. You know, so, um, I mean, I think, I think for me, if it's wrong, it has to be wrong across the board. Like, it has to be wrong even when it comes to where we work where we eat, I mean, you know, where do we draw the line? You know what I'm saying? It's like 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 it's like saying you can only wear Christian clothes by Christian clothes by Christian people. You can only eat at restaurants by that are run or owned by Christians. It's kinda like it doesn't really when you really get down to like living that as a lifestyle, it really goes out the window. So. For some people, though, um, they'll they'll take what you just said as a license to go say anything now, because you're saying I'm still a Christian. Um, so, what do you say to those people that are like, okay, there has mm -hmm. to be some bounds on it to the maybe the younger Christian or the younger artist who's saying, yeah, man, I'm just trying to reach out there in the dark with this new with this new jam, doing my work in the booty shakers for Christ. You know, I'm gonna be out there in the strip clubs doing rhymes, going in there just so I can make sure that I bring light in the darkness. Um, and you, I'm, I'm sure you don't want them yeah. using your words to, to, to co-sign on that. But how would you give that person who's trying right, to right. what you're saying to justify? How would you give them bounds for what how they should think about joining with with folks on self destruction part two or not? You know? Yeah, I, I think that as long as it doesn't go against our beliefs, then I think you're good. I think that if you're going into a strip club just to get you know your record played or something like that that doesn't really translate to me because it's you know like that type, that temptation i wouldn't recommend you go in those places um especially being a man and as visual as we are i wouldn't recommend a person does that so i think that like i said if it's if you if you if you get record that has nothing to do with like there's no room for you on that record to shed light on your worldview, or, or like give a biblical worldview for that topic, then I don't I don't see the point of it. I mean, um, if it's a record that's about something that's totally against what you believe, I don't see the point. I, I don't I don't see that as like a, a green light for for Christians to do that. So I definitely feel you. There's definitely a line that of the distinction that has to be drawn. Um, so I just think that um, you know. On the flip side, you know, people people rule it all the way out though. Like they given like they given no room for for like they give you no room to be able to do anything with with someone that's with with someone that's secular. And that doesn't that doesn't make sense to me because um I mean I'm I mean it's 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 hip hop artists that, that have just reached out to me to be on record. You know what I'm saying? And I, but I'm but I'm very selective of who I do records with, and right. I, like in terms of me, even me being on their album, I'm selective. I'm definitely selective in terms of me having them on my album. Now, so like an artist like um, that may have a secular artist on their song, I don't, I don't think that it's wrong, depending on who the artist is and depending on what the song is about. Right. So, because for me, because for me, there's really, there's really there really never was a, a, a sacred and secular divide for me. So I can't just, I can't just like, 
do it, give it like a, a one over glance and yeah. just say, like, it shouldn't be done. It shouldn't be done because they're secular. Like, Christian artists shouldn't do stuff with secular art. You can't just do that because everybody in that quote unquote secular realm does, is not like everybody else in that secular realm. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I think that from this, if you want to do a divide, a Christian secular divide, and if the Christian wants to look over into the secular side, you just have to select people who would add to what your contribution is in terms of, I mean, kind of like how McCray did with Big Crit, the right. Made Day record. I think, I, I don't I don't see anything wrong with that. I think that was good. I think that um, there's artists that are a part of secular hip hop, because see, see, here's where it gets funny for me, because I've never considered myself a Christian hip hop artist. So for all, in terms, for all intents and purposes, you could you could put me in the secular department. So somebody may say, "Well, we shouldn't do." What well, cases like if if that person, then that person could say, "Well, we shouldn't do songs with Jafia," because he's just because I feel like I'm more, I'm more I'm more cut from the fabric of hip hip hop culture to me. So anything that's hip hop culture. Is automatically just that's secular to Christians. Like hip hop culture is basically secular to Christians. That's why they had to come up with Christian hip hop because they feel like Christian hip hop is like regular hip hop is secular. And there's no there's no ask like when you look at what secular means, it mean basically means godless. It means godless, and you can't look at the like hip hop culture in its entirety and just say it's godless. Just because, I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't know. You can't. You can't just say that. So, um, so for me, like, I've always felt like I was more attached to the fabric of hip hop culture more than I was ever attached to the fabric of Christian hip hop culture. So, so, and maybe that's why. So, maybe that's why so many people in the beginning of my career were, were like, like, like trying to trying to blackball me and tell people not to work with me because of that. You know, like, I mean, now it's like, a, now it's like everybody, everybody wants to just be a regular rapper now. Like most, mostly everybody that's in Christian hip hop that's popular are, is saying that they're not a Christian rapper. Yeah. So, Would you go as far as to say that, uh, that, that the people should battle, uh, that Christian MC should battle or stay away from that? Um, I don't know. I mean, I think the word battle, I don't like the word battle, but I think like in terms of like like a, a cipher, I feel like a cipher is cool, but I mean like to 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 go head to head like um now when you say battle, you mean battle Christian hip hop artists like battle eight, eight mile Christian hip hop like battle, a, yep. A secular. Yep. Any of those, either Christian Christian, second oh, artist, so any like, of that. Like 8 mile. Okay. Uh, okay, I got you. Um, so I mean, I don't, I don't, I mean, I mean, if it's done in fun, if I mean, I think, I think, I think the heart behind it plays a part in it. I, I think if it's like for the purpose of like just tearing somebody down, I, I wouldn't say that. Like that's not Christian. Like to tear somebody down isn't Christian to me. Like I mean, if the truth tears them down. It still has to be coupled with love. So I mean, so but if it's done in in fun, I mean, you know, like it's people in my it's people in my crew that I might do that with. You know what I'm saying? But it's just done out of love and out of out of pure fun. But um, I mean, like me battling, like I'm a Christian who raps. So me battling somebody who's a non-Christian, I really don't want to battle them. But honestly, to be true, be truthful with you. I've been put in that situation before. Hmm. Like I've been, I've I've been put in that situation before, in front of my old church. Wow. <laughs> I've been put in that situation. I've been, I've been put in that. Right, I'm gonna tell you what happened. Did you win? I've That's been what put I want in to know first. Like <laughs> 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 they, they, they they said I won. <laughs> they said I won. 
So how'd it go down? I won. I won. I definitely won. I definitely won. Oh, so I right, so basically, I right, basically right. We were we were at church, and this is when I was going to Antioch. For for those who you some people who you know heard me mention like a church called Antioch and Pastor Aaron Campbell from Philly who was really like really like the church in Philly that was like like I don't I hate the I hate the term hip hop church, but it was really like a lot of the Christian hip hop artists from Philly went there. Um, and it was they were really supportive of people like of us. They were supportive of us. Um, so one of the guys who went to the church named Espo, um, he used to, like black dude, and um, he used to be he used to be down with he used to be down with like the, the Italian mafia like back in the day before uh-huh. he got saved. So um, his son his son was his son was in the streets. So um, he told me that he told me that he wanted. He said one day he was like, "Yo, one day I'm gonna introduce you to my son. I think y'all were like really like each other." He said, "I think my son will really like you." And I was like, "Cool." I said, "I would love to meet him." So um, you know, one day after church, um, I I, I looked when church was over. I looked over in the corner and I saw Espo, and he kind of flagged me down like, "Come here." here. And um, uh, you know, he introduced me to his son. So. He pulled me to the side, and he said, "Yo, Jafai." He said, "My son, you know my son in the streets like that." He said, "But he rap too." He said, "He nice though." He said, "He nice." He said, "But he said I'm gonna tell you what I want you to do." He said, "I want you." He said, "I want to take you outside." He said, "I'm gonna take y'all outside." He said, "Whoever he said whoever else want to come outside is welcome outside." He said, "But I want y'all to go outside." He said, "I want you to give it to this baby." <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Yo, I want you to." I said, "He said I want you to handle me." Wow. I said, "I was like, you." Sh-. I said, "You sure?" I said, "I was about to go." I said, "I was about to go Chipotle or something and get something to eat." <laughs> and he was like, um, "He was like, he was like, before you go, he said, I, want, I, I just want, I just need you to give it to me." He was like, he was like, just serving. You know what I mean? So we went outside and um, I let I let him go first. Uh-huh. I let him go first, and he spit like, he spit like maybe like, like 80, 80 bars. He went in, he blacked out. He went in, and um, I was like, all right, all right. So I I just got back in my zone. I just I just I just went. I just want to kill. I want to kill, kill mode. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm and, and and I think my first few lines just just shook him up, like because I saw the look in his face, like like he wasn't expecting that. Yeah, like he wasn't expecting that from no dude. It was no dude that just came out of a church. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So um, so like you know, I I think I went in for like maybe like I, I gave him probably like a hundred bars. Wow. Again, like a hundred bars, and um, he me. You know, I mean, he shook my hand. He hugged me. He was like, "Y'all." He was like, "Respect, man." He was like, "I respect you." He was like, "My dad told me about you." He was like, "Yeah, I see what he's talking about now." He was like, "Yo, man," he said, I, "I bang with you like that." And um, I was like, "Take my map." I was like, "Take my number, or whatever." And um, he took my number. I took his, and um, his dad just hugged me. Is afterwards, this is me, man. Like, cause this dude, his dad, Espo, he was like, you know, what I mean, he was like a killer, like that, like, you know, what I'm saying. But he, but he was, he was transformed, and he just was so soft-hearted, and he just had so much, so much compassion. You know how the Bible says, um, um, he, he who has, I would say, he who has been given much. Help me out, Chris. He who has been forgiven much loves much. Mm-hmm. I think that's what it says. And um and that was just somebody who has been just for, forgiven. We've all been forgiven, like yeah. But um, so much stuff that he came from, from, man, and for him to just such a a loving person to just to see him been like broken, like a broken dude, but broken by the gospel, like the the truth and the love and the gospel was was so crazy. And he he was just 
just like he hugged me. He just was like, "Thank you, thank you, thank you." And um, yeah, yeah like, but unfortunately, um, I had to say, man, actually, um, a couple years after that, his son actually got killed. Mm. And um, that was that was real hurtful for me. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, so um, I really had to liken to him. I really had like big plans to really like kind of like really pour into him and really like really disciple him really yeah. and um i didn't i never got the chance to mm. yeah hey yo that's a um wow bro that's that's taking battling to a completely different level i mean to turn into a ministry opportunity which is dope that it can get flipped like and you said like so much that I wanted to hit on, like when you were talking about how there's so many MCs now that don't want to be labeled as Christian artists and whatnot, and um, you were doing right. that a long time ago. It was you were doing that like back right. in six oh five, yeah. um, and now it's all of a sudden popular. Before that. Um, mm, you know, yeah. yeah, before that, exactly, yeah, and um, yeah, this, they're, they're kind of blurring the lines between. There's not really a line; they're just moving that line out of the whole game as far as Christian MCs. It's a lot that I right. want to know, but we kind of right. um, pressed for time. But um, there's a question that I wanted to ask you. Yeah. And um, every rapper that I know had that moment when they, re mm -hmm. they realized that they could rap. They wrote their first rap. It was dope. And it's mm -hmm. like, I can do this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So kind of tell me what that moment was. When did you realize that you could rap? And then also, you mentioned earlier that you sing. Mm -hmm. So when, mm -hmm. when did that kind of kick in? And then when did you decide you're going to merge the two? Yeah. Um, well, I think I think when I first learned that I that I could rap was, um, you know, we were, we were on a block. We was getting high. We had like a little, just like little van, little truck van type thing. We used to get in and, and get high. And um, uh, all of my friends rapped. You know what I'm saying? I was the only one that didn't rap. Mm. Right? So, so they kind of told me, like, they kind of forced my hand. It's like, yo, you going to rap today. You know what yeah. I mean? And um, I was like, I was like, man, I ain't rapping. I was like, I don't rap. I was like, that's y'all thing. I said, I'm not rapping. And um, they was like, um, nah, you going to do it today, though. They was like, basically, like, if we got to hold you down, you going to rap. So so, so um, I said, cool. So um, I just kicked like a little freestyle. And, you know, I think that, like, they they just I remember them looking at each other like they was like yo like what you been like writing in the house and we ain't know about it and I was like nah I said I just just that was just something I just felt like I wanted to say and they were like yo that was that was tight Word. so after that I just was like once you tell it's tight I'm gonna keep doing it <laughs> and if I'm gonna keep guessing if I keep getting that reaction out to you I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna just keep doing it so I just kept doing it and then um you know. After a while, people started asking me to like do it more and more and more, and I just was like, you know what, man, I, I I could tell that people, you know, are like, like, like enjoying when I do this. So you know, if it be something to make my friends happy and they enjoy when I do this, then when I do it, and um, but I was the crazy part is I was singing before I was rapping, like I was singing, like because my mom plays the piano and you know, like our friends sing and. They used to always make us sing. So um, I was singing before I was rapping. So I always, I, I used to always write songs in like like middle school. Like I used to write songs. Um, and um, I think I just said, you know what I said? There's no reason why I shouldn't showcase everything that I'm able to do. If people may enjoy that too. You know, I like, I like seeing my friends happy. If I could do things that are enjoyable to my friends, why not do it? So um, my friends used to always ask me to sing before, so I just said, you know what, why not try my hand at both? And it, it just just kind of worked, you know what I'm saying? Then like the producers I kind of was getting with, they were like giving me records that I felt like kind of called for that type of feeling. Yeah. So it was like, I, I just kept doing it. What up? Hey, yo. All right, thank you so much, man, for coming in. Um, we're going to get this one last word about rhetoric coming out. Hopefully you can make it. Um, out on August the second. Um, just for everyone else who hasn't yeah. heard the details yet, the the definite details are that it will be on August the second. Um, the doors are going to open at six thirty. The show starts at eight. 
go right now to rhetoric.p4cm.com and get your tickets. Um, we're running a little discount now. It won't last long, but after that, it'll be tickets are $15 online and then 20 at the door. You won't want to miss it. Um, seen here today, Jafia Life. Um, brother, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we've appreciated yeah. having you here, more about you, getting a side that people don't see oftentimes. Absolutely. That, you know, everybody, uh, you know, the whole church clothes mixtape that, that Lecrae put out recently just kind of tore the clothes off more widespread about we, things we can do to shed a light and what hip hop and the mm -hmm. Christian community can do to shed light in ways that we haven't even seen up to this point. So thank you, brother, for coming on, yeah. for keeping it real. I'm going to pray us out and, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll end this thing for the people. Um, yeah. Thank you, God, for this time. We had the cool. opportunity to come together. Um, we just love you, God, for brothers like Jafai Life, that he is, like his name says, providing light and life, um, the light of your son, a different type of son than it, than it is his name, but the son that we know, Jesus Christ, that light is shining in his life, whether it's in artists that want to battle, he can turn that into a discipleship opportunity. We pray that other Christians, wherever they may be, do not see a divide between secular and uh, the sacred that they're able to see the cross that barrier and, and, and like he just said that just like the, the unforgiving servant we see the opposite that if you've been forgiven so much you ought to be able to forgive and, and, and love in, in a way that you have received that forgiveness God we pray that that message and that word goes out like he's spoken to us tonight in our hearts as Christians so we can spread the light and life of your word God we love you we thank you in your son Jesus name Amen Amen, Amen. All right. Have a good night, brother. That's dope, man. Thanks for having me, man. Thanks, Thanks for coming on. You too, yeah. man.